In this video, we're going to introduce normal distributions. Okay, so here we are. We have uh, four normal distributions in this graph here. We're going to talk more about them on the next slide. Okay, so the normal distribution, it's the most common type of distribution. There are many. Uh, if you have remember from any other stats courses you've taken, there's Poisson, exponential, binomial, uniform, the list goes on. Uh, anyways, the normal distribution is the most common of them. Uh, it has um, that bell shape to it. Okay, it looks like a, a bell. Um, and it is continuous, meaning you can be anywhere along the graph. Um, it's different than what we call discrete. Discrete is where you can only have counting numbers. So for example, if you're talking about numbers of people who show up to an event, um, you can't have 2.41 people show up. You can only have two or three. Um, so continuous is when you can have any value. So you could have 2.31 or 2.49. Um, so any value uh, between any of the values is possible as well, if that makes any sense. Um, okay. It is symmetric about the mean. So for example, this blue one here, um, if our mean is right in the middle here at zero, um, which it is, then uh, either side looks identical. The, the two sides are mirror images of each other. Um, so that means the mean and the median are almost, or they're equal as well, or really truly for real data, they're roughly equal. Um, so our data sets neither skewed left nor skewed right. We looked at that in previous videos about skewed left and skewed right. Rather, it is symmetric. Um, so perfect mirror images on either side here. Um, and the total area under our curve is one. Okay. So any of these curves, although they look quite different, the area underneath any of these curves is one. Uh, that's really useful later when we're doing our probability calculations. We're going to use that fact. A uh, little note here too, let's look at the different distributions. So if you'll notice here, the blue one is very steep near the middle, uh, and most of the data is really condensed in near the mean, whereas the yellow one here uh, is very spread out, so the data is not very uh, condensed near the mean. What is the difference between these two, the yellow and the blue curve? Well, they just have different standard deviations. So the blue curve has a standard deviation um, of the square root of 0.2, or if you will, a variance of 0.2. Um, the yellow curve has um, a standard deviation of the square root of 5, or if you will, a variance of 5. Um, so it's much more spread out because it's got a much, much larger standard deviation. Okay, um, to determine if your data set is bell-shaped or if it is normally distributed, do a histogram. In general, you should start by doing a histogram of your data um, to see what shape it is. So this guy here, it's pretty close to bell-shaped. Um, nothing's ever perfect, but I would say yes, that's pretty close to bell-shaped. If you keep going in stats, you'll learn tests um, to test whether data is normally distributed or not. Um, you can get a p-value uh, related to the odds of it being normally distributed. Um, and to normalize a distribution, so let's say you take this data set, it ranges all the way up to almost 70. Um, what uh, we often do with data sets is we get the z-score for each of the x-values within the data set. You do it using this formula. Um, so if you have a population, use this formula or uh, use this formula if you have a sample. So this is just your population mean, population standard deviation, sample mean, sample standard deviation. Okay, um, so talking about more about z-scores, so what do they actually measure? Okay, so let's say this is our data set right here. Um, we have our mean at 110, and let's say we have a standard deviation at 20. Okay, so that means that we jump up by 20s here. Okay. And the standard deviation, um, if it's at 20, for example, that means that on average, a data value, any x value, is an average distance of 20 away from the mean. In this case, at 110. Um, okay, of course, data can be further away than that, but the average distance that a data point is away from the mean is 20. Okay. Um, and so, of course, you can take your data uh, like this, and you can calculate the z-scores for each. So this curve right here, or this data set, would look like this if we normalized it, okay? If we put it in terms of its z-scores. Um, now, let's just look at a specific example. So let's say our mean is at uh, 1,010, standard deviation at 20. How many standard deviations above the mean is 1,050? Okay. So again, 
we have this graph here or this data set right here. Um, you can go get your z-score, um, 1050 minus 1010, so mean is 1010 divided by 20 equals 2. Um, and let's see where that is here, right here. Um, you could also just count it if you knew that your standard deviation is 20, you could start at the 1010 and go, okay, one standard deviation above is 130, another one above is 1050.